Most of the time when I do videos, I like trying to show kind of how we can problem solve in color. So maybe it's simplifying a complex idea or showing some tips and tricks along the way. Today, I want to actually flip that idea on its head a little bit. I want to show you what happens on a film when things go right. So there's a fundamental problem that I just see with so many filmmakers when it comes to this area of color. And the way I like to describe it is uh, too many people look at their film vertically rather than horizontally. So oftentimes there's this really intense focus on how to make this beautiful shot, but not asking what are the themes that are gonna carry through this whole project? What are those elements that are going to elevate the whole film and provide a, a similar aesthetic, a similar look? It helps us zoom out and ask, well, what are our intentions in theory? And then how do we go about implementing those in practice? Now, to be fair, this is one of the hardest parts of color. How do we have these principled, durable adjustments that exist across the whole project and elevate our film towards the vision as a whole? So what we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you a behind the scenes of color for a commercial I worked on not too long ago. But rather than show you the clips that I did the most work on, the clips that were the most tricky to get done, I actually wanna do the opposite. I wanna show you the clips that I did the least amount of work on. So let's start here by thinking about some of the big picture creative decisions that we make when we start a project. Well, the first one we start thinking about is what is gonna be our color management. Now, I've already set up some color management for this project. Uh, there were a couple different camera types, so I kind of uh, grouped the uh, input color management in the uh, group pre-clip nodes. So this was filmed on you know, a, a camera with Sony S-Log3. And so we're working in DaVinci Wide Gamut. But then we also have to ask the question, how are we gonna get from our working color space into our display? And this brings up this idea of DRTs, or display rendering transforms. Now, a Resolve has built in a way to get from DaVinci Wide Gamut, you know, intermediate, to Rec. 709. But there are other options out there. And when I'm building the creative look of a piece, I'm often auditioning different DRTs, different way of solving that scene to display solution to see what elevates my project the best. Now, I auditioned uh, a number of different DRTs here. Uh, I, I considered using Resolve's just standard color management. Uh, Jed Smith has Open DRT, which is also a really great solution. But I ended up using uh, Juan Pablo's uh, 2499. And here's the reason why. When I was thinking through kind of the vision for this piece, um, one of the things I knew is I wanted to lean into some of the, the very rich, organic look of the film. And I, I knew I kind of wanted to, to bring some of the yellows out and some of the cyans out. And uh, one, of the, one of the ways you can do that is um, you, you can kind of do what I like to call like a hue twist almost. And that is, if you think of a color kind of coming out from the middle of a, of a vector scope, so maybe we think like the reds, what happens to those reds as they get more saturated? And one of the things that I, I knew I wanted for this piece is I wanted there to be this kind of grouping where as colors got more saturated they kind of grouped towards certain colors so when I think of like the reds and the yellows and maybe the the yellow greens I wanted those to kind of come and eventually bend in towards the higher saturated ranges towards yellow so we kind of get this grouping toward the golden yellows and then on the opposite side of the spectrum I knew that when it came to the true blues and the cyans I also kind of wanted this grouping towards cyans, whereas it got more saturated. The, the, the color can initially stay pretty true, but the more saturated it gets to get a, a little more grouping together. And what's so cool is uh, JP's 2499 actually allows this to happen very naturally. So one way that I can kind of show you how this works is, uh, let me actually just uh, disable everything going on up here. And I'm going to use this uh, RGB chips DCTL. So this is from uh, Thatcher Freeman. It's totally free uh, on his GitHub. But what this allows us to do, here, let me disable this. You'll see that we have uh, these, these very clear uh, lines and hues of color, and if I pop open the vector scope, woo, that is very big. Let me shrink it down for a moment. Uh, it allows us to kind of see what's happening to these different hues throughout the spectrum. So if I just open uh, Resolve's, you know, standard color management, so you can see we're going from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709. I have some uh, gamut mapping turned on there. Uh, what's happening to the hues? Well, they largely are staying in the same direction. There's some little adjustments, right? Like we see a little more bending towards greens, a little more bending towards red but largely these lines are, are fairly straight in there. Now watch what happens when I enable uh, JP's 2499. And once again, this is very similar to a color space transform, but it's, it's got some additional capabilities inside. Watch this, I'm gonna enable it. Do you see how we have this grouping here? Do you see how things are kind of curling in a very interesting way? Uh, to help illustrate this point, 
And I have a little power window here that we can kind of isolate uh, specific elements of uh, the, the spectrum here. So look at what's happening to the reds. I'm gonna show you in, uh, so DaVinci Wide Gamut, the reds are staying pretty straight. JP2499, we're getting this curl here, right? We're seeing that as the reds get more saturated, they kind of stay true red, but then at a certain point, they start to uh, get a little more yellow. And you can see this throughout the, uh, the, the spectrum up top. So uh, once again, let me show you uh, Da Vinci's way of rendering it. And then uh, Juan Pablo's 2499. Do you see that nice way that the yellow is kind of bending in? And we can look at this through other parts of the spectrum. So what's happening to kind of some of the, the greens? Well, the greens start pretty true to green here. And then once again, kind of bend yellow. We're getting that grouping towards yellow that I'm looking for. And then as we uh, go check out some of the blues, What's happening with the blues? Well, we're getting this grouping towards cyan. Uh, and just to compare it, right, with uh, Da Vinci Wide Gamut, it, it's grouping towards blues, if not slightly, you know, magenta towards the top end. Now we're grouping more towards cyan as we kind of sweep through the rest of the spectrum. Uh, one of the other things I like about this is it's not giving too much emphasis to uh, magenta. Just to show you, you know, uh, Da Vinci Wide Gamut, there's lots of potential magenta. This one's kind of making magenta choose. Are we, we're kind of choosing between bending towards red or bending towards kind of blue cyan there. So you can see how this, gr this really interesting grouping is happening with the tool. Now there's ways to tweak all of this. Uh, JP's uh, DRT here has a lot of ways to adjust it. You can kind of rotate, you know, what is happening to the reds up top. But for the most part, uh, its default state was really what I was looking for. Now that we have our color management set up and it's already helping us scooch us towards the right direction, we can start uh, taking a look at the, the big picture look for this piece. And what you'll find is this is a really subtle look, but it's a subtle look that just has a little magic inside of it. Now, uh, it's being implemented here as a LUT. I, I built it with a couple external tools and just for simplicity, it was easier to just bake it down into a LUT here. But I can, I can really describe what's going on inside of it. And I'll kind of toggle it on and off between a few clips here to, to show you what's really going on. From a contrast perspective, so this is it off and this is it on here. From a contrast perspective, we wanted to, to add a, a little more contrast in here and to have the shadow have a little bit of smokiness to it, especially if you look down here in kind of the, uh, the grill of the car, you'll see that there's this nice kind of, uh, you know, just smoky organic texture to the very bottom end of the image. And then as far as the highlights go, uh, we have a really nice soft, it was a very, very gentle roll off towards the, uh, the top of the image. Um, this one uh, kind of shows you here, you can see kind of the reflections or the light bouncing off the side of the balloons. This is the before and this is the after. You'll notice that although we're increasing contrast, Here's the before, here's the after. It's not like the sky is getting much more bright. It's this really, really gentle approach to the, uh, the white point of the image. Now, if you want to do a little more thinking about kind of the global contrast of your piece, I have done a video that was part of one of my Q&A videos. I'll put a link in the uh, description of the video. Feel free to check that out if you want to think a little bit more about the contrast of your piece. From there, I started thinking about kind of the split toning. What you'll notice, especially I noticed this kind of in his beard here, as well as the shadows, is just a little bit of cooling going on in the very bottom end of the image. Just to kind of show you what that looks like on a, a gray chart here, since sometimes that's easier to see. Let me pull up a, a waveform for you to look at. You'll notice that there's really nothing too crazy going on here. So you can kind of see the little bit of the, the shadow lift that I have from the contrast curve, the very nice slow approach to the, the white point. But you'll notice there's a very minimal amount of warming in the top, but definitely more of a cool boost in the bottom. And it's not insane right here. Let me disable and enable. It's not crazy, but it's just enough that as we scooch it in, so here's kind of the on and the off, we get this nice little bit of color separation. Uh, I can kind of show you in this as well. So here it's off and on. You'll notice that kind of in the, uh, the, the strollers here and some of the shadows, we're adding that little bit extra color contrast, which is just so very pleasant. From there, when it came to saturations, I really didn't feel like we needed any more saturation. Like it's well shot. I like the, the color management that we had set up is already providing some good saturation. And uh, JP's 2499 actually has a, a density slider built into it. So you can already mess with the density. And I was liking where that was. I didn't have, I added a little more density into it. Like you'll notice that some of the blues get a little darker here, some of the greens as well. I, uh, I gave a little more density to the greens of this piece than other ones, just to make sure they weren't getting too wild on us. 
Um, but I, I really like the, uh, the density that we already had built in. And finally, when it came to the hues, let me pop over to the, uh, the vector scope here so you can kind of see what it looks like. One of the things that I was doing with the hues of this piece is I really liked where it started, but I wanted just a little extra grouping than what uh, JP's 2499 already had. So I, I was kind of bringing the reds a little more yellow, some of the yellows and yellow greens, uh, you know, a little more towards that, that golden yellow place. Uh, I was also taking the blues and making them a little more cyan. You'll see uh, right here this kind of blue Pepsi balloon. Uh, it has maybe a, the tiniest tone of just this little scooch of magenta. And you'll notice that it really cleans itself up when we enable the look here. And uh, yeah, and the green's just a, a little bit more yellow. So it's not that crazy of a look, but let me just kind of show you what these elements together look like compared to just standard resolve color management. So I'm gonna disable this. Here we have uh, standard resolve color management, and here is the look plus JP2499. Here's the before resolve color management, here's the after. Isn't that an immense difference? And you can see how our, our little choices do so much, right? Uh, we were looking at kind of the blue of this car and just sliding it towards Cyan is very pleasant. Kind of the pink of his shirt, if you look on the vector scope down here, you'll see how it's leaning a little uh, towards the magenta side of red. And now it's leaning a little more towards kind of the, the, the orangey yellow side of red. It's just these really small elements that create a gorgeous image. And what did I do on a clip level underneath this? Well, really not much. All I basically did was a slight little exposure and contrast adjustment, as well as a, uh, a little vignette on the outside. So there's kind of the before and the after. Once again, this is where we started. This is where we ended up. It's not crazy changes, but it does so much for the, uh, the magic of the piece. Let's see how this works on some other clips. So this is another uh, clip from the piece. And uh, let me just get a little reference here. So this is just classic, you know, resolve color management. And here's our look. So here's resolve color management. Here's with our look plus JP2499. Uh, and what I just love about this is if I go to the uh, just standard resolve color management look, uh, as I look at some of the, the blue tones of these windows, they're a little more cyan, but when I compare it to the sky, it's got a little more kind of a magenta issue to it. But as we enable our, our look here, it pulls them together so nicely. I also think that the, uh, the um, kind of like bushes down here are another good example of what our look is doing. If we look at this just through classic resolve color management without kind of our look and intention in place, this bush feels, it doesn't exactly feel one dimensional, but it doesn't necessarily have a lot of depth to it. Look at what happens with our, our look here. We know that we have this split toning, so it slightly cools off the darker elements of the image. Uh, and what also, because of this uh, hue bending, this hue twist that we kind of get from the uh, JP2499, we have the tops of the bushes bending a little more towards yellow while we still maintain the green and the, the shadow parts. So here's kind of the before once again, and here's the after. Uh, the blues are all coming together a bit nicely. We get a more depth in this tree. Just small things like kind of the, uh, the, the, the tops of these awnings over here. I really like how we're getting this slight bend towards orange. It's beautiful. And what, what did I do on this individual clip? Once again, I'm showing you the clips I had to do the least amount of work. Just a simple exposure adjustment. Just dropping it overall to make sure that uh, we, we like where the overall balance is at. It wasn't more complicated than that. Uh, I suppose the other uh, two elements I had on here was uh, halation and grain, but the, the halation and grain were so small, like you, you could barely tell that there's any grain there. And the halation was so subtle, you'll only see it around the very most high contrast elements of the image. Uh, one clip that you can kind of see the halation in is this one. We have these uh, kind of tree leaves up here. You'll see if I zoom in, we get a little warming just around the very edges there. That's, that's the most that you will see when it comes to the, uh, the halation on this piece. Uh, let's, let's do that comparison again. So here's kind of what we see through uh, resolve color management. And what do we have for our look right here? Isn't that just a world of difference? And if I, if I ask what's happening underneath, well, all that I really did underneath was just a little bit of light finessing. So just, you know, brought down the top, brought up where the, the guy was sitting and a very slight um, uh, warmth uh, adjustment to the, the overall balance of the image. So it naturally was like this, a little bit cooler. I just warmed it up slightly. I think this clip here is a good clip for us to kind of start wrapping up the video on simply because guess what I did on the clip level for this one? Absolutely nothing. The look fit so well. I literally did not have to touch a single node at the clip level. I just used this beautiful look that we built on top. And let's just do a little comparison here. If we were to just kind of use resolve color management, this is, this, this is what we would get. What does our look bring us? It brings us from standard resolve color management to this look that we've built. 
This is what's so cool when we can really be thoughtful about how we're developing our big picture look. When we do a good job at this point, we will encounter shots like this, where it's, so, it's good footage, we've built good intentions, a very robust global look, that it makes our life really easy in some cases. We don't live in a perfect world. I, I'm not telling you that someday you're gonna have a commercial or a film where you just develop the big picture look and all of a sudden all the work is done. No, and, and part of the reason why people hire you know, us as colorists is they want us to help problem solve things along the way. But if you don't at least start with this goal in mind of building a big picture look that has the potential to serve everything in your film, You'll never get to it. You'll never get to it if you don't have that at least target to set out for. Now, um, I've talked about many elements of look building in the past uh, when it comes to contrast. I'll once again uh, check in the description where I did a Q&A and talked a little bit about building uh, contrast for the piece. When it comes to density, uh, I've released videos on density and how to get that inside your project. Uh, hue rotation is, is pretty simple. If you want to do something like I did in this piece, you know, of kind of like bringing some of the, the groupings of hues together, well, you could do something like, you know, you look at the uh, the reds and the yellows. You can bring, you know, the, the reds a little more towards yellow over here and the yellows, you know, a little more towards the center point. Just something like that, right? We're kind of providing this grouping of, of hues here. That's really the intention of what's happening, but sometimes you can get cleaner results depending on how far you're pushing things with, uh, with different tools. You know, there, there's many different ways to to solve what you're doing. Which is about all these other elements I've talked about in other videos, and I'll try to link videos below if you want to kind of want to go deeper in this. My hope is that you, whatever role you're in, maybe you're a colorist, maybe you're a cinematographer, maybe you're an editor, director, to just, can we start thinking about color more horizontally on our projects? It's less about what are we doing on this shot specifically, and more about what are these elements? What are these ways we can treat the film, kind of build this big picture system for us to work within that will elevate every single clip in our project. It is one of the hardest things to do, but it's also one of the most rewarding, can save you time and create beautiful images. By the way, if you want to check out uh, JP's 2499 DRT that I mentioned earlier in the video, head on over to the resource link in the description of my video. I'll put uh, JP's 2499 there and uh, Jed Smith's Open DRT as well. I think those are two great options if you're looking to kind of expand your vision for what's possible when it comes to the output transforms. Well, if you enjoyed this video, would you let me know in the comments what parts of it you liked or what resonated with you? It's always good for me to hear some of that feedback of what you found valuable from it. Also, hitting the like button helps the video reach more people. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you will see more content like this in the future. All right, I'll see you in the next one.